Okay, today we're going to talk about the uh, the input output impedance of a circuit of a device. I'm not going to show how to uh, compute compute the input output impedance, but I'm going to show you why it's so important to compute them. Okay, so let's let's say we have a a device or a circuit here as a black box. So that's your circuit that you've just designed. So on the input side, on the input side you have Z in. So Z in. Input impedance. And here I'm going to put the ground, and this is going to be the positive. So here you have the in. Okay, so that's the input impedance. Input impedance. On the other side, the output. And the way you compute the input impedance is that you look at your device and you look you look at your, you compute your input impedance looking at your circuit this way from this side. Okay, on the output you have something very similar. So ground, and here you have a voltage source, voltage source. So I think I'm just going to call it V or Vs and you have your output impedance which sits here Z out and this is your V out and as for the input impedance the way to compute your Z out is to look at your circuit your device this way from the outside. Okay, so for instance, this thing could be like a common emitter amplifier. And when you design a common emitter amplifier, you of course design the bias voltages, but you also have to look into the, you have to do an AC analysis. And during the course of that AC analysis, you compute the Z in and the Z out. Uh, in, the, in this case, it's probably just going to be an uh, input resistance and an output resistance because there will probably not be anything reactive uh, AC wise. Okay, so um, so so when you do your design, you do like a open circuit analysis open circuit analysis and you end up with something like this so you you know your Vs, you know your Z in and you know, you know your Z out most likely it's just going to be an R in and an R out so now uh, in reality this thing is going to be fed something from some other circuit or device so if you are looking if you only look at the input basically you're going to connect something that looks like this on this side so you're going to have something like this you're going to have a voltage source voltage source so i'm going to call it prime in order not to confuse with this one and you're going to have something like this. So this is, I'm going to call it the source. I mean, really it's an input, but it gets confusing. So this is the source. And here you're going to have a Z, I'm going to call it ZS. And this connects to your input. Okay, so this is the input side. And then we're going to look at the output side in a moment. But this this whole thing sh 
looks is the same as this guy because this thing here is part of a circuit or device and we are looking at the output of that circuit or device so it looks exactly the same as this the output side of our circuit here so this is vs okay so uh, so what we would like to see of course is that this vs prime we would like to see all all of vs prime the voltage source being fed to the input of our device but it's not going to happen because here you have a volt you have a zs meaning that here you're going to have a voltage drop and this voltage drop so i'm going to call it v drop it's very easy because it's a voltage divider okay you have a zs and you have a z in so it's going to be zs divided by zs plus z in times this guy the vs prime the voltage source so let's to make it easier let's assume that uh, those circuits don't have any uh, reactive components and it's all resistive so I'm just gonna say V drop equal RS divided by RS plus R in times V S prime so you want this you want this V drop to be as small as possible but to achieve that, so you want V drop to be as small as possible, and to achieve that, RS should be small, and most importantly, R in should be large. So this guy should be large for the, this, this term to be small. So in practice, what you want is you want R in to be larger than 10 times Rs. I mean, intuitively, you can see that because if R in is large, it cannot draw too much current from that uh, source. So that's what you want. So you want to be th this guy, the R in should be large. Okay, the RS, you may not have control over that one. So, okay, R in should be large. So that concludes the on the input side. On the output side, you you will typically attach a load on this side, and it's going to look like this thing. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be here. You're going to have a Z. I'm going to call it ZL for load. Okay. And this representation is looks exactly the same as this representation because this as you can see it like this is part of another device another device and we are looking at the input side of that other device I know it gets confusing but okay so this is the load basically so again what you really would like is to uh, the voltage at the load to be as close as possible as this voltage the voltage source at the output of your device but it's not gonna happen because of this guy here you're gonna get a voltage drop and the voltage drop is equal to Z out divided by Z out 
plus Z load times Vs. So the Vs here is this Vs. So again, to simplify, we're going to use resistive components only. So it's going to be equal to R out divided by R out plus R load times the Vs. So we want the V-drop to be as small as possible. So, uh, so RL should be large and R out should be small. Okay, so in practice, R out should be less than one tenth of R load. Okay, so this is this is why it's so important to to figure out when you when you design a circuit to figure out what your you need to figure out what your vs of course is but you also need to figure out the z in and the z out or if you only have uh, resistive components your r in and your r out then you can figure out is the if the transmission between uh, the div another device on the input side and another device on the output side that transmission is going to be efficient Okay, so you need to have this and that. So I think I'm going to stop here about input and output impedance of a circuit. If you like this kind of content, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will make more. Bye.